In our last video, we learned about an IPsec VPN. And in this video, we're gonna focus on a different type of VPN called a layer two VPN. So exactly like we saw in the last lesson, we have two physical locations, both of which are connected to the internet through the router. There's gonna be one major difference though. So let's just start with a basic use case. Let's say on the left, we have our primary data center. And on the right, we've got a disaster recovery location. So basically in this situation, we want to be able to say, hey, if our primary data center completely fails, we want to be able to bring everything back up at this DR location. And we may even want the ability to move workloads from one site to another or vice versa. So it's very important that we maintain the same addressing scheme at both locations. Think about it this way. If my primary data center fails, I might have a bunch of virtual machines running in the primary data center. Well, if I'm going to bring those VMs up at my DR site, do I really want to change the IP address of every virtual machine? Do I really want to change all of my DNS entries? Do I want to deal with all of that headache? Or if I can maintain a consistent addressing scheme at both locations, I can avoid a lot of those headaches. Well, let's do that. Let's adjust our diagram here. And let's say that instead of having different subnets at different locations, we want to have one subnet that is present at two locations. So it's a subtle change, but notice what the diagram now looks like. We have segment one at location one and segment one at the DR site. Computer one and computer two are in the same subnet. If computer one generates a broadcast, computer two should get it. They're part of the same layer two segment. Okay, well, how is this possible? Because in the middle here, we've got routers and we've got the public internet. This is possible with a layer two VPN. So again, we are going to establish a secure VPN tunnel, just like we did with IPsec. These two routers are going to communicate with one another. They are going to share a secret password. They're going to establish a tunnel using their internet connected public IP address interfaces. But the way that the router works is now going to be a little bit different. So basically, now let's say that computer one wants to communicate with computer two. Well, the operating system of computer one is going to say, well, we're trying to communicate with 10.1.1.12. That's on the same network segment that we're on. So it doesn't need to go to the default gateway. But what the ARP table of computer one is going to reflect is the fact that this IP address is reachable through the MAC address of this router interface. So when it creates that layer two frame, that layer two frame is actually delivered here. And this router is going to say, oh, we're receiving a layer two frame that is destined for the other side of this VPN. Let's encrypt it. Let's send it over the VPN tunnel to the router on the other side, which will decrypt that traffic, dump it out onto the local segment where it can reach that destination MAC address. What we've essentially done is taken our layer two network and using a VPN, we've stretched it to another physical location. And, and now think about this, because these are some of the things that we can do in the world of virtual machines. I can take computer one and if I'm using, let's say, VMware vSphere, vSphere supports something called the long distance vMotion, right? What that means is I could take a VM without shutting it down and I can migrate that VM over a geographic distance to another physical location without the VM ever going down. Pretty wild stuff, right? And so now this virtual machine has been moved to the other physical location. I didn't need to change the IP address of the virtual machine. I didn't need to change the MAC address of the virtual machine. Nothing in the operating system needed to change. 
So a layer two VPN or a stretched layer two network gives me not only disaster recovery capabilities, but mobility capabilities. It gives me the ability to take a workload that's running in one physical location and move it to another location without changing the IP address or the MAC address of that machine. Let's take a moment to review some of the key concepts that you learned in this lesson. So we learned that a layer two VPN is used to extend a layer two segment over a geographic distance or over the internet. This allows us to have systems with the same IP address scheme at both sides of the VPN. And this can be really useful for certain applications, including disaster recovery, where we need the ability to restore workloads at a different location, and we don't want to change all of our IP addresses. Or mobility, if I want to take a virtual machine that's running in one physical location and move it to another, again, without changing the IP address of that virtual machine.